<laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to um, the Creative Thinking Workshop. I'm really happy to see you all. You know my name is Miss Nelson and I actually teach a course here uh, at CBCC, Humanities 246, Creative Thinking. And once I started teaching this class, I just became completely fascinated with all of the different approaches, different perspectives that there are for creative thinking. And in this class, um, we study creative problem solving in business and the environment and personal life. In fact, tomorrow that class is going downtown uh, in Lynchburg to Cow Artisan Chocolates, a small shop that makes and sells chocolates. And we're gonna, they won a, an innovation award recently. And so we're gonna talk to them about how they come up with new ideas in their business. So that's my, sort of my interest in this. And of course, there's always more and more and more to learn about creative thinking. What we're gonna do today, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the definition that I use in my class for creative thinking which is up here, and I'll, I'll go into that in just a minute. But before we start, I'm gonna show you a, a short news clip, a video of a story um, that really uh, demonstrates the best of creative thinking. A lot of people, when they think about creativity, they think that's just for artists or musicians, but uh, being creative can happen in any field and in many ways. This is a story um, about a 3D printer. Have you all heard of these? Yeah, we have one or two here, actually. And so this is how somebody made really excellent use of a 3D printer. And I'll just go ahead and play this uh, news story if I can get everything to work here. Walt Disney once said that animation can explain whatever the mind of man can conceive. He was talking about cartoons, but advances in technology have taken that basic concept to a whole new dimension. Michelle Miller shows us how the idea of a modern day inventor became a 3D reality. Grabbing a backpack is hardly the feat of a superhero, unless you're 12 year old Leon McCarthy and your hand looks like it's straight out of a science fiction movie. You've actually become sort of a cyborg. It's a cool factor. Yeah, it's like a, a special. It's special instead of different. Leon has been special since birth. While he was still in the womb, restricted blood flow prevented his hand from developing. I saw his hand sticking up and there were no fingers on it. It was hard for my wife. It was hard for me. Two years ago, his father, Paul, began the search for an inexpensive, functional prosthetic. What he found was this internet video hosted by Ivan Owen. An inventor in Washington State. I've always had this vision of people being able to build their own prosthetic device at home. Owen and a collaborator in South Africa designed a hand that could be made by a three-dimensional printer. It's essentially like a hot glue gun with some plastic that feeds into it. The printer head gets really hot, it liquefies that plastic, and then layer by layer creates an object. The design relies on wrist movement. Downward motion creates cable tension that closes the fingers, while a move upward opens them. The assembly instructions were posted for free on the internet. So someone like Paul McCarthy in Marblehead, Massachusetts, could print it. He took the idea to his son. I thought it was a little crazy. He was like, we can print all these fingers and then like clip them all in and it was a little too much. The first time you saw it and when you tried it out. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. What made it awesome? I could pick up, say like a water bottle. Like say, I could pick up my pencil. What is it like to see him with this? Making your kids happy is like the most rewarding thing you can have as a dad, right? The price tag was also appealing. Many 3D printers sell for about $2,000. Materials are far less expensive. This thing costs us like five bucks, 10 bucks, you know, whatever, it was nothing. What would a prosthesis cost you? $20,000, $30,000. The cost allows father and son to experiment with newer designs. Want to outgrow a hand, you can easily make a new one. It's a do-it-yourself solution that was unthinkable before technology made ideas printable. That's cool. Yeah. Michelle Miller, CBS News, 
Marblehead, Massachusetts. Wow. Well, wow. huh? what, what do you think? Wow. <laughs> it's amazing. What, what, why do you say that, Martin? I'm just wondering what you're, I'm going to turn the light on here a little bit. Um, here comes the light. Oh, that's bright. Um, what makes it amazing? Well, as you mentioned, our focus is creativity, and I, I can see in two different ways. One is not only the 3D printer, but also people are thinking to, uh, you know, use the technology even with the disabled, disabled people to be able to do their, you know, daily uh, works. And you know, and it was amazing. I didn't know that. I knew about the 3D printer, but I didn't know yeah, that it's I, specific. It, yeah. That was great. Yeah. Um, any other comments? This is, to me, this is the perfect definition of creative thinking. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. But um, anything else? OK. So um, the, the definition that I use in my creative thinking class is that here's the big picture, and this is creativity, any creativity, which just means the creation of something original or new. It's something new and useful, okay? And so it can be useful in many, many ways. So that, that's way more than art and way more than music and can include many, many things. And inside this creativity, we have two kinds of thinking, critical thinking and creative thinking. And usually, they can't be separated. But when you're thinking, when you're thinking creatively, you're coming up with new ideas. OK, so that's the big thing about creative thinking, new ideas, or putting old ideas together in new ways. And then you have to figure out, are these ideas any good? Is this going to work? You know, is this going to be a good thing? And that's the evaluation part that you need the critical thinking for. And so when you put these together, this is how we do creative problem solving. So it's sort of a back and forth. And what this video showed is that the father um, just went online, found this material online, and was able to create this hand. But then they have to continually assess and evaluate. They have to see, is it working? Is it fitting? Then they have to go back and, and do more. So it's a, it's a back and forth um, process between coming up with new ideas and making sure those ideas are going to work. So I think that's a fantastic um, illustration. There are many, many approaches to creative thinking and creativity, and people study it from all sorts of different vantage points. There are many theories. And um, one thing that uh, you can find repeatedly in the literature is that we have to kind of turn off our brain. <laughs> we have to, there's a voice that most of us have in our brain that is saying, no, that's not a good idea, or no, that's not going to work. And turning that down a little bit helps people come up with new ideas and approach things in different ways. And so what I want to show you right now is one more short video about a study that they actually did with, with children um, and how, uh, how this study helped them to come up with new ideas by turning down that, that voice in their head. Okay, so let me show you this one and then we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and stop me if you have a question, please. No, correct. 
correct answer.
So they need to come up with those kind of process of evaluation of the, the whole system. When you, um, I was thinking about the Steve Jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't follow the you know specific direction. In, in, even in one of his speech in California, he said that I, I, I didn't go to college. Yet. I didn't take any courses in college. So I, I think, first of all, it, it depends on the, that individual, uh, you know, how uh, they have the power of creativity or a system. If they want to be creative, some of them they don't want. They, they just want to follow the frames. You know, they don't want to have some, something new. If you look at the history of science and technology, you can see the same pattern in different ages. In religion, same pattern. Everything, if some, someone wants to say something new to the society, always they see resistance. Mm -hmm. it's, it can be very dangerous, in you know, fact. Because the yes. people want to follow um, specific directions, specific frames. They don't want to even think about what is going on behind that, you know. It's thinking outside the box. People don't want a lot, and this is also very true. Um, again, um, studies show that, that most people have a bias. They, they have um, a tendency to not value creativity. And this is particularly true, shockingly, of teachers. That um, teachers in classrooms with children reward students more if they are less creative because they're better behaved you know they're just following directions and you know so but yes it's it's, it's very true and I think uh, what you say is really important so it's it's important to understand that many times there is definitely a bias against creative thinking okay? and so that makes it that makes it kind of tough I'm going to turn the light back on so we can look at this and actually do an exercise oh thank you um, in uh, brainstorming, one of the um, real important techniques of critical thinking. Um, let me see what else I wanted to say about just generally. There, we probably won't have time. There are some, have you all heard of TED Talks? Yes. Yeah, OK. And what the most watched TED Talk of all times, I think it's been watched over 2 million times, is by uh, Sir Ted Robinson, I think that's his name. And, and it is specifically about this. It is about um, uh, how the educational system in the West was set up to teach people to be workers, to go into industry. And because of that um, fundamental um, purpose, creativity has not really been um, a high value for education. And so he has, he's an expert in the field, and he has a lot of ideas and really interesting stories about, um, about the whole area of creativity and education. And if you're interested in that, I will send you all a link so that you can watch it. It's really good. It's, it's very interesting. OK. But at the same time, we uh -huh. can see that Yahoo is here in the United States, mm -hmm. <coughs> Facebook, mm -hmm. YouTube, or all other social media no, but no one else in the whole world, they would you know, even think about having some new tools to be able to connect people. Even internet was, was from the United States. Why not? So I think we have both sides, you know? Right. Um, yeah, you can't say there's a complete um, a decline in creativity with that kind of stuff going on. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely. I think there's a lot of opportunity, there's enough opportunity in this country, in this educational system in this country. It, it depends on that individual. You know, I don't think the government or the educational system stop people thinking more creative and wants to be more deep. You know better than me because you, uh, yeah. you, you are in, in, in the educational system. Though. Right, but, but I, I take your point. I mean, business is constantly looking for innovation and because that's how they make a living and, and you know, that's how things change. 
but I think that um, in the classroom, there, there is quite a bit of evidence that students, after years and years and years of taking tests and filling in little bubbles on tests, that it becomes harder for them to come up with new ideas. So, you know, I, I think, um, as you say, it sort of depends on, on the, the context. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a little bit of brainstorming. Have, have you all done this before? Brainstorming? Yeah? Do you, when was the last time you brainstormed? Have you solved a problem lately where you had to come up with some new ideas? Well. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. And so, what was going on? Uh, I I picked a hard topic to write about, um, and I have to give it a lot of thought. How I want to organize it, and what I want to include in it, what should it be cost and effect, should it be this. So I'm just putting everything on a piece of paper. So that's. Okay, that's fantastic. Maybe we'll take that. Um, maybe we'll take your project as a, you know, as as a test if you want to. If you can tell us enough about it. The thing about brainstorming when when they study it is it's probably one of the oldest um, problem solving methods that there is, especially in business. Um, it's been around for, since the '50s, at least in the United States. And you know, it's funny because growing up, nobody taught me to think like this at all. To look at a problem and say. Oh, here are these possible solutions. And I think that's how it is for most people. Most people don't really learn how to look at problems and say, well, we could do this, we could do this, or we could do this. But this you can teach to children. Um, and so this is just a really uh, simple framework. Of course, when they study brainstorming, there are big problems with it because people kind of get stuck in these grooves. But what we have here, it, very um, simple model. Okay, so here's a problem. I, I want to bake chocolate chip cookies, but I have no eggs. All right, and so then, and you can teach children, or you can do this yourself, or you can modify it. Come up with three possible solutions. Okay, you could drive to the store to buy eggs. This is the brainstorming part. You could borrow eggs from a neighbor. You could look for recipes without eggs. And then for each solution that you come up with, you just list a simple pro, why would it be good, and a con, what would be wrong with it? Or you know, what would be a problem with it? And so we have for driving to the store, yes, I'll get my eggs, but it takes a lot of time and it will cost money for gas. Okay. I could borrow eggs from my neighbor, yes, I will have my eggs, but I really don't want to go out and bother my neighbor at this hour. I could look for another recipe. Okay, pro, if I find one without eggs, then yes, I can make cookies. Um, but it will take time to look for another recipe and I might not be able to find a recipe. So you go through, you're just exploring these different possibilities. <clears throat> and so this, if you're actually gonna apply this in real life, of course, if it's a bigger problem, you wanna explore it a lot more deeply. But you choose and implement, you choose a solution and you try it. And so in this model, um, this, this person tried to find another recipe, and then when she or he came back and evaluated or assessed the solution, the, um, it turned out it wasn't a good idea. Okay, so it required other ingredients that they didn't have, so that one didn't work. And so then they had to start from scratch, and the ultimate outcome of this was that after reviewing the other two solutions, I decide I'm not going to accept the cons. So I ask myself, what dessert ingredients do we have? Oh, I find out I can make apple crisp, so I'll make that one instead. So this is just a, a model to, instead of getting totally overwhelmed <laughs> by a problem, and <clears throat> then this is a step-by-step -step little plan to help loosen up the wheels to think about something. So what I'd like you all to do is think of a, a small problem, just a small thing that you're dealing with, not huge. I mean, 
It could be your paper, but I don't know if you can fit it into this model. We, we, can, we can try some brainstorming on your paper if you want. But um, usually it's better not to use something like um, serious family issues or really big problems. But if you just take something small, like, let me see if I can think of an example. I just want to go through the, the process one time so you all get used to it and see, see what you think about it. Um, let's see. Um, I, I, if I were going to do this, instead of just avoiding problems and you know not thinking about them, which is what most of us usually do, um, I might try to look at, okay, a very small problem I have. When I'm working at the computer, I should, I, my doctor has actually told me I'm supposed to get up and move around every half hour, okay? Because, of it, because it's better for your circulation. And he, he has actually said, you really need to do this. Okay, so I'm working really hard at the computer, but I just keep going. And I'll be sitting there for hours before I know it. Okay, if I wanted to try to find some solutions to this, maybe you all can help me brainstorm. What could I do? Give me three three possibilities. Set an alarm to remind you. Okay, alarm. Okay, that's good. I'll do that. <laughs> that's the only thing I can think of. Mm -hmm. Okay, what if I set the alarm, but I'm, I'm still too busy and I'm just not going to do it? Anybody? I know something that will make you get up is like something's cooking on the stove, burning. <laughs> <laughs> so can you okay. plan that? Yeah, burn, burn your food. <laughs> burn something on the stove. Okay. Yeah, that actually, but, but there is something to that. Like, um, you could have something going on that you have to get up and attend to. You know, you could be washing clothes. Do it on purposely. Do it right before you get on the computer, so you know you have to go and do it. Okay. All right. And then turn it on. All right. So, well, not necessarily burn something, <laughs> but I mean, cook something. Okay. So cook something, or have have an activity you have to check on. Okay. So there's one. Set an alarm. There's two. Anything else? Okay. I have one. I could make myself a little note, and I could I could say. It's for your health. I, I could make myself an affirmation and put it on my computer to remind me. Okay, so I could have a reminder. All right. So if we were doing this, then I would go through and I would um, I would look for a positive and a negative for each one. So setting an alarm. Can you give me a positive? Your mind too. Yeah. I mean, it should work. It's pretty easy. You know, if you have an alarm, it's it's not a hard thing to do. You can even find one on the computer. What would be a con? A negative. I'm probably not going to do it. <laughs> I'm probably just going to turn it off. I might ignore it. Okay, so I might ignore. It. Okay. Okay. Then, if I have some activity going on in the background. What's a, what's a pro for that? As you said, it, it forces you, okay? So it's probably going to work. It, it makes you get up, okay? What's a negative? You could burn your, <laughs> you could burn your, your dinner. Uh, you could burn your house down. <laughs> okay, it could cause some sort of <laughs> accident if you're not careful. It could lead to something unlikely. Okay. A reminder, I would say, again, that's easy to do and also easy to ignore. All right. And so if I were implementing this, if I were trying it, I would, I would decide which one I want to try. I would try it and I would evaluate it and see what, what happened. I've tried everything except this one. <laughs> so that's the one I'm going to try next. <laughs> Thank you. No, I think it's a good idea. I mean, if it's something you have to move for, then you're going to move. So I will definitely try that. OK, so now I want you all to try, maybe on the back of your paper or somewhere. Um, I, I, let's see. Do you need a pen? OK. 
So try to think of just something not huge, but just something small to brainstorm about. You have something? Yeah, my, this is about my car. My car was broken about two weeks ago. Uh, I noticed that there's something wrong with the headlight switch. The smoke was coming out <laughs> while oh, I was driving. <laughs> yeah, that was my first time experiencing this thing on, on Honda Pilot. So in that time, first I decided to stop the car, you know, to drive it, even you know, disconnect the battery and all the electric uh, connections. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking that what, what are the solutions? So. <coughs> And I was talking to my wife and myself that the first solution is just sell the car. Ah. Tell people that this is this is the problem. How much they can buy the car because I was thinking to get a you know higher model. The second option was to <coughs> just go ahead and repair the car and, you know, and keep the third option was to just repair the car, get the safety inspection, and then sell it. So after that, I was thinking about uh, renting a car, a brand new car for two years leasing. And then after that, you know, if I can get a job or something happen financially, uh, we can buy a new one. So with each, with those three, Martin, three with those three, solutions. selling, repairing, or repairing and then selling, did you, when you were looking at this, have you gone through and figured out, because this is a big decision, because this is money. Yes. Yeah. First solution was to just sell the car. But the, the thing was, I didn't want to sell the car to the people, and then they get in trouble. Mm -hmm because I didn't know that what is wrong beside this problem. So that was that was the negative part of it for con. con. Mm -hmm. um, but pro was just get rid of get this rid of because there's no insurance on the car, no guarantee from the manufacturer, so I'm gonna spend a lot of money. Right, okay. The second solution was to, uh, to fix the car and find a good mechanic. And I, was, I decided to talk to some friends here in Lynchburg. I didn't know any good mechanic in this area. And I decided to have a consultation with uh, my friend, who is a mechanic in Northern Virginia, to see what's And then the third research was Google Online. And I found that this is the common problem for Honda. Uh -huh. A lot of people. Yeah, Google. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and in the meantime, my safety inspection due was end of October. Uh -huh. So, and then the third solution was just fix the car and then sell it and go for, for leasing. The good thing about the third option was I can sell the car to the person after safety inspection and I can tell them the truth. This is the car and this is the situation. Check the Carfax report and then, you know, this car is for you. Mm -hmm. But the negative part or con was I might be able to lease a car for two years in a reasonable price. I mean, you know, can I find a car with a reasonable price to purchase the car? So between all these solutions and pro and cons, I decided to just fix the car and ask my mechanic to uh, do the best and use my insurance coverage to pay for some part of it, like towing or something. Mm -hmm. And then after I changed the tires and everything, I decided to just keep the car since I, I know what is going on, I know what, what I to need expect. in the car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so that's a that's a complex, that's a very, very complex decision-making process. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was using the paper right. to be able to write down all the pos possible yeah. you know, ways to be able to find yeah. the best option. What's really cool, 
to do that. Have you ever seen like a mind map where, where you, for some people who are very visual, I've got to go in a minute, but you, you draw each one of those yeah. different, yeah. And, and yeah. then you have, yeah, which is a really nice way to see it visually. But um, yeah, so that's that's a perfect example, but a little bit more complex than our, our, easy, our easy one. Fairness, what did you do? I would like to do exercise every day, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't have time or I'm very tired. Boy, do I hear that. <laughs> yeah. um, and I could make a plan for everything that I have to do. Uh, ignore something that is not important mm -hmm. and sharing responsibility with my <laughs> okay, okay, and so, I mean, I know we're making it sound easy right here on paper, right? But but if you go through the, the pro and the con, you know, there will probably be more than one pro and con for each one, but you can certainly, you know, see where the problems are going to be popping up. Yeah. Are you going to try it? Are you going to try this? I'd love to hear I what happens. I my daughter. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You're going to do the, the cooking and... Not me. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't at the last part. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, um, well, thank you all for trying that. Thank you. Thank you so Very much for coming. Yeah. yeah um, coming, so. Well, uh, you know, if I you're wish. interested, I'll show you the syllabus for Humanities 246. Yeah. And um, I wish, you know, the International Society, they can come up with the solution for all the crises and problems in the world well, using the wouldn't you know, that logic be so great? With, with That's methods and everything to come up with. Yeah, well, I think we need a little bit more help. Cool.